Hey everybody, I'm in the Advanced Technology Center, third floor electronics lab at Central Piedmont Community College. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate some tests I did with electrolyte capacitors. The thing about electrolyte capacitors is over time, these capacitors can lose their um, capacity. And of course, as we all know, a lot of electrolyte capacitors out there have the tendency to fail, especially if they're a bad series and or have a flawed electrolyte formula inside them. All these caps here are actually not failing, but we do have one of them. One of these caps is actually a known bad series, and that is a Nichicon HM. Get you a close up here so you can see. I've actually seen many of these fail motherboards, and I've had to recap many boards that had these. But this one here has not failed, so I figured I'd bring it in and test it anyway. We also have an OST RLX 3300 microfarad capacitor, rated for 6.3 volt operation max. That Nichicon HM is also the same kind of value 6.3 volt, 3300 microfarad. We also have a Chemicon KZE. Here's the series. The KZG is actually a bad series. This is a KZE. I've not heard any bad things about this series. We also have here a Rubicon ZL 1200 microfarad 16 volt rated capacitor. And we have this Elite 6.3 volt 3300 microfarad capacitor. Now basically when it comes to capacitors, the voltage is actually what the cap is ready to run at maximum. It, it can run at any voltage you give it below the maximum rate of voltage. In this test I'm actually running the caps on 3 volts and I'm going to explain how this works. Here's a drawing of the circuit that I created on the breadboard. Basically we're getting a 6 volt supply and there are two 1K ohm resistors in the circuit. This is one and this is the other. The first one is there is of course to put a resistive load toward the capacitor and the other is there to act as a capacitor drain. More or less when I cut off the power to the circuit the capacitor will discharge to ground through this resistor. And of course I have a wire going over here to measure the voltage across the capacitor, which that's actually hooked to the multimeter here. And this, this school has some very nice equipment here. There's our oscilloscope, We've got a National Instruments Elvis breadboard, prototype board, and a BK Precision power supply, and a BK Precision function generator. So basically, we're going to go and demonstrate this. But first, I'm going to show you the equation they use to determine the capacitance of a capacitor. See, over here we have an LCR meter, which this meter can, of course, it can detect inductance, capacitance, and resistance. <clears throat> but basically, it only goes up to 999 microfarads, not a thousand or more which all the capacitors I have here are at least a thousand microfarads. Actually, I think the lowest one I have is a 1200 microfarad. So, we've got to do things the old school way, using some math. <clears throat> it's kind of an estimate. But basically, you look here at capacitance. You, when you, when you um, hook up a capacitor into a circuit like this, you, of course, multiply the resistance of the circuit times the capacitance to get tau. And the time a capacitor takes a charge is five time constants. Tau is actually one time constant. So basically, let's say we have a 3300 microfarad capacitor. The calculation would be 1.4 seconds, which is one time constant. Five tau, which is five time constants is seven seconds. That's how long it usually would take that capacitor to, to discharge on a circuit that is 500 ohms. 
Now you saw earlier we have two 1K ohm resistors here. Basically you have to look at it this way. The 7 in resistance is 500 ohms. Any 7 in volts going to this capacitor is actually 3 volts. Now let's go ahead and fire up this circuit. The capacitor has fully charged. This one here seems to be running at where it needs to be. On average, it takes about 8.2 seconds. Just an estimate. I don't really have a good stopwatch with me. I'm just using a clock on the computer. But it took about the right amount of time for that capacitor to charge up. And as I mentioned, I tested all of these. Now let's go ahead and go through the results here. Well, first, let's go ahead and power this off and watch the capacitor discharge. So basically, on a capacitor, the negative side is actually what goes to the ground. And the positive side actually hooks to your voltage. And the only time the capacitor actually sends power through both, <laughs> both leads is when it's charging. When it's fully charged, it acts like an open circuit. But of course, when needed, let's say if you get a slight voltage drop or whatever, this capacitor send some power back to help regulate the the voltage. See capacitors the thing they like to do is they like to regulate regulate voltage. Inductors like to regulate current. Anyways, let's look at the results here. The first cap I tested was a Nichicon HM. And even though it's a bad series, it seemed to charge to near its full capacity. And of course these are estimates, these aren't actually 100% accurate. If I had a good LCR meter, I can actually measure the accuracy of this. Look here at the Elite. Its calculated amount of time was 1.4 seconds. Now, a 3300 microfarad cap is supposed to take um, a total of 8.25 seconds for five time constants. Tau is actually 1.65, but notice for this one, the calculated tau was 1.4 and the total time to charge was around 7 seconds that calculates to only 2800 microfarads on a 3300 microfarad capacitor now I'm not exactly sure of the ages cap this capacitor is probably at least 10 years old so it's just a little demonstration of the quality of capacitors and of course over time they degrade in terms of capacity the OST fared pretty well it calculated to nearly what it should have done. The Rubicon also did well. Now with the Rubicon, the tau is 0.6 seconds, the 5 tau is 3 seconds. And then I actually run a test and got those results from it. So the Rubicon, as expected, did very good. And of course, Rubicon is a Japanese brand. Now, Kimicon is also a Japanese brand. But I'm not sure of the age of this cap. Anyways, we tested it and got 2.6 seconds. Now, of course, these are both the same capacity. The calculation would be about 3 seconds for 5 time constants. Tau is 0.6 seconds. The calculated tau on this capacitor was 0.52 seconds. And of course, you divide that by the resistance to get your capacity, we get 1040 microfarads out of a 1200 microfarad capacitor. So this Chemicon didn't do its full capacity, but of course this demonstrates the age, I mean about how caps over time, electrolytic caps, will actually begin to degrade. This is why a lot of computer motherboards nowadays are using solid quality caps, which tend to last a lot longer. So anyways, let's go and review here. Basically, as I mentioned just now, what you do is you take your time constant, which is tau, divide that by your resistance of the charging circuit to get your capacitance. So anyways, hopefully this information will help you understand why electrolytic capacitors are not the best kind of capacitor out there, and why most motherboards nowadays don't even use them. Anyways, any questions or comments?
feel free to ask and thanks for watching